Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Julia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I was doing pretty well. How's nice life? Nice to meet you. Me too. It's so nice to see you. Are um, you in LA right now? I yeah, I actually am in LA. How about you? Are you in LA? Yeah, I am. I am. The weather is so like wonky. It's like oh, it was cloudy. Raining. Wasn't it raining last night? Or yesterday? Yeah. I was so sorry. I was like, what is going on? Because you know how yeah. like a month ago we had the crazy storms? Mm -hmm. Like we had the crazy storms and then and then everybody got happy, right? Because it was all it's been sunny for like a couple of weeks and we're like, it's like yeah. summer weather. <laughs> we're like so happy. And then what happened yesterday? Last night. Yeah. What was going on? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I guess this is LA weather now. It's like gets yeah, kind of really, cloudy during the day and like really gets horrible. sunnier midday. But I'm really so horrified <laughs> by it. Um, are you from LA or? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm from outside of Philadelphia. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah, wow. people always think I'm from California, but oh. I grew up like 30 minutes west of Philadelphia. Wait, I'm actually from California. <laughs> I'm, oh, nice. I'm I've only lived in California. Oh wow. I'm like, okay. I'm like born and raised. I'm um yeah, I'm from I'm like an LA native. Oh nice. Yeah, I'm LA native, but then um I I lived up in the like Bay Area for a while. Cool. Yeah, like um San Francisco and then a little bit like Silicon Valley and then I just um but then I was like always like flying back here to LA family a lot, most of my family's here and then I just actually moved back here like um a couple of few years ago yeah I just oh, okay. and it's like homecoming for me <laughs> nice well, welcome I'm, back I'm actually also I'm part Chinese <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, I'm half okay. Chinese. <laughs> so my what's your other mom, half? My um, my other half. Well, my dad's like American. He's white, but it's actually Eastern European, like Ru Russian, Lithuanian. Yeah, wow. Eastern European. But um, I mean, I'm like five nine. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like a lot of people don't believe me. Like they ask me like if it's like. Like, are you sure? Like, is it real? But I speak like Cantonese and everything. Oh wow! My family and stuff, but. My sister is more believable. She's like a little shorter. <laughs> and like she so like your mom is Chinese? Yeah, they're from like Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been back since I was like maybe 12 or something. But like oh wow. In Asia since I was like I haven't taken an Asia trip since I was like young. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have been wanting to, I'm planning a trip to go to Vietnam, like, oh, nice. in the next month or so. Yeah, and I was Gosh. thinking about maybe stopping by Hong Kong after. Awesome. I've never been, and I've always wanted to go. Oh, my God. Yeah, I've I've really only been to, like, Hong Kong, um, like, Tokyo, like, Japan. But I, yeah. I am planning, I think, um, I do a lot of, like, film festivals. I'm very involved in, like, film industry. I, I, I do, like... I'm very active in the film festival like scene and circuit so like they have like one of um I have some film critics that I work with and then one of them he's he does a lot of Asian film festivals so he goes oh, cool. to Hong Kong film festival like Japan Japan I think Japan film festival like every year but yeah so I feel like oh that's like an opportunity like I think maybe one year like I'll I'll like use that and like maybe go to one of those you know it's a good excuse right yeah go to, I'll go to Tokyo or something yeah so, go and like do a little bit of work and then yeah have fun. practice my Chinese <laughs> yeah oh, wow that's so cool are you are you Chinese are you Vietnamese or I'm half Chinese and half Vietnamese oh are you so oh, wow. yeah nice um people like often get me mixed for like many things like yeah. they think I'm Filipino yeah. or Korean or Japanese oh, right. um yeah sometimes people yeah. even think I'm from like Kazakhstan but I'm half Chinese and half Vietnamese yeah it's so I common can... you know people can't they can't tell or whatever I I'm of course like me like 
they get really confused it's really hard it's like so much confusion <laughs> yeah um and um yeah people definitely do do get confused I can speak Mandarin but I um I can't speak Vietnamese oh, okay. I can like have conversational Mandarin yeah oh that's cool actually in college um Mandarin was my language in college <laughs> oh wow like my college that was my language yeah but so I, I learned how to like write the characters and all, but I, I don't really know it well anymore because I didn't continue practicing. So I actually want to like refresh my memory. Yeah. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, I just know very little men because I didn't practice it. Like I didn't, because like my family, like they don't really speak that. I mean, just like in business, like my family that's like does the business and stuff, they speak Mandarin. But like, it's mainly like Cantonese. So like, you know, it's, I have more opportunities, like when I visit my aunts and uncles to like speak Cantonese and stuff like that. But like, you know, yeah. I didn't get as much chance to like practice my Mandarin. So I kind of forgot it. I just know <laughs> like Ni Hao and stuff like that. But like, Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it will come back to you though. Yeah, like I should different. totally. Yeah, I found like, I actually found like a language school here. And there's, there's so much online stuff going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would love to know what that language school is. Oh, it's, um, I've been wanting to yeah, practice. It's, um, yeah, it's in Pasadena. It's in Pasadena. I'll, I'll okay. like, offline, I'll message you. I'll, I'll give you the links. <laughs> they okay, teach, sounds all, good. They teach like um, a lot of different languages, like French and all these other ones too. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's way better than like um the Duolingo. <laughs> it's better than that. My friend uses Duolingo, yeah, um, but I've never not, used it. I tried it for a little bit. It's just hard. It's like the app, an app, right? So it's like you have to be really self-disciplined because it's like you yeah. just do it on your phone and it's just hard <laughs> to keep up. I feel like watching movies or like listening to music is probably the best way to learn. Oh, yeah. Like I, a different language. Yeah, I also, um, I'm trying to like refresh like my French because um I, oh, nice. I I go to Cannes Film Festival um each year annually. Um I've been going since 2016 and I'm I'm actually off to Cannes um next week. So I'm really like, Oh so, wow. Yeah, I'm really excited. So with my European friends and see my friends from Paris and the UK. I'm, I'm really like, in Sweden, I'm really excited. I love going there. It's like a fresh of a breath of fresh air to go hang out in Europe. I, you know, get get away from LA. <laughs> And um, yeah, uh, so I really love going there because it's like it's like a different kind of environment, different vibe. And I'll be like, you know, on the coast, French Riviera by the beach. And it's like a lot of networking. And, um, you know, I really love it. It's like red carpets and premieres and really big stars. It's it's great. And um, I, I see a lot of the same friends every year and it's a big reunion but yeah so I kind of I studied French like in high school and everything and I just um I kind of have no excuse for not being totally fluent right now but I have a really good friend um from Paris so like when I'm with her she like does all the talking <laughs> for me oh, and okay. it's like I'm kind of yeah. spoiled yeah but I I want to take French lessons also so I can be better when I go to France but yeah. yeah yeah I've been in situations like that where like I'll be in Europe and like my Italian friends are like all speaking Italian and I'm not really sure like they're kind of speaking on behalf of me you know or they'll be like yeah. oh sorry sorry we forgot what we like we shouldn't <laughs> be speaking Italian while there's like an American here um or like you know with my sisters and my mom my mom's always like talking in Chinese and doing like <clears throat> all of the back and forth translating so I okay. totally understand you oh yeah but in a way I mean it's kind of nice sometimes to you know then you know if they're like more experienced and you're like oh I don't have to worry about it but then it makes it kind of hard to like learn or, or practice but yeah totally that's oh, good totally. to understand <laughs> Yeah, um, like, I feel like I've picked up on, like, body language more from, like, being in those situations, just, like, trying to, like, read the room and, like, understand, like, what they're talking about or, like, how they're feeling. Yeah, I know, right? It's cool. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so I'm so excited to go and everything, and, um, <coughs> yeah, but, yeah, so anyways, but, yeah, it's, 
Well, welcome. You know, so nice to have you, Julia. And, um, you know, we're celebrating, we're kicking off AAPI Heritage Month, right? So celebrating Asian yeah. this month. And um, I actually, um, I'm, you know, we're, Dickin Magazine is very active on Instagram and everything. We, um, we interviewed, we do a lot of interviews and we have a strong focus on, um, um, you know, Asian Americans and, you um, um, you know, Asian American film industry and talent. So we interviewed actually uh, Michelle Yeoh last year, um, back in May, and um, oh. for everything, everywhere, all at once. And you know, we didn't know she was going to win the Oscar or the film was going to win anything. But you know, we we're very supportive, and um, so we we're really excited. So we kind of kicked off with a little tribute post just the other day with our, you know, repost of our interview with Michelle. But so, so we're you know, so welcome. We're so happy to have you you know, um, on our show and everything. And, um, so, you know, um, I, I did a little research on you. I understand, um, you know, you, you're a model, you're an actress, um, you know, you're, um, an advocate for the Asian American community. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little um, more about, um, you know, what you do and your background. Yeah. So, um, I am originally from outside Philadelphia. I'm half Chinese and half Vietnamese. And I got into modeling at a young age. I was scouted um, while I was working at a mall. Uh, my mom didn't want me to do it. She said that she had gotten asked to model when she was, uh, you know, my age at the time. And that she just didn't really want me like pursuing that career. She was a little bit more traditional. Um, so the next year I tried out again and I, I did, um, the model casting and got to walk in Philly Fashion Week and it was a great experience and that was kind of like getting my feet wet into modeling. My mom had found out like months later in the summer because my neighbor was a makeup artist and like broke it to her that she was at doing makeup at the show and like saw me. So um, after I guess like you know having to clear the air with my parents and kind of um, open up to them about like expressing my interest with modeling um, they weren't like super supportive of it, but I still like continue to pursue it. Um, and I've been modeling in New York. I've modeled in Milan. Um, I've modeled like all, I'm with agencies all over the US. Um, so because of modeling, I've been like able to dabble in other things like, you know, being in music videos and getting into acting. Um, so that's kind of my focus now. I really want to focus more on acting. I love modeling. It's so much fun. I've had so many incredible experiences. Um, I just feel like as a creative, I'm ready to like give more and do more and go deeper. Um, just because a lot of the times as a model, you're kind of booked based on like your specs or like fitting, you know, the idea or like image that they have of you whereas like I feel like with acting you can go deeper you can really bring that person to life with like more than just a photo you can bring it to life with video your voice like your backstory and everything so um that's my focus now that's great that's great so um um what kind of acting roles have you been um doing or have you been focused on um recently or before um so I've been auditioning for, um, I've been auditioning for both film and TV. Uh, I auditioned like a couple years ago for a Hallmark movie and it got down to like me and one other girl, uh, but they ended up going with the other girl, unfortunately. Um, I just auditioned for an episode of 1923, which is the prequel to Yellowstone. Um, so those are like two big auditions that I've been doing. And great show. again, I do... Yeah, it, it is a great show. It's it's really good to watch. Um, but yeah, I think my focus more is on focusing on those auditions and like taking more classes to practice just because I feel like I do get a lot of castings for modeling jobs and I've been putting those first, but I'm ready to kind of like switch and kind of put like the acting auditions first and put the work into um, all of it so I can book a role. That's so great. I, I love that. Yeah, because um, I mentioned, you know, I grew up in LA. So um, I grew up around a, like a lot of actors. A lot of my friends are actors. And, you know, I've been doing acting training as well. I really love it too, because it's like, you know, I love like, like, ex you know, expressing yourself artistically. Yeah. So great. And it's, um, 
you know, just the creative expression is, is just like so wonderful. It's, you know, such a, such a wonderful craft. I really enjoy that as well. And, um, you know, it's such in LA is a, such a great place to be, you know, because like, it's, you know, this is like the hub of where everything is and things like that, you know? So, oh, um, totally. yeah. And so, yeah, I definitely think, um, you know, that that was a really good, smart way to do it, like to go from modeling and in, into acting and, and things like that, because a lot of, a lot of people that um, want to break into acting don't, don't have that don't know where to start. So that's, that's good that you already had that, you know, really good, like foundation, a portfolio where, where you already had a lot of visibility, you know, in, in terms of that. So. Yeah. And I think at one point, like a couple years ago, I was deciding like, okay, like, do I really like, do I want to be like a model or like an actor? And I had picked modeling at the time and I went with it. Um, but now I'm just kind of like, okay, like, I feel like I could go like deeper. Like, I feel like, you know, when I'm on set as a model, like you're, you're kind of being present and like working the camera and it's like you and the photographer, but like when you're acting, it's just a little bit more fun because you're able to interact with other characters. And I love like the spontaneous moments where you can improv and just like be in a different world, I guess. It's just, it's just a lot deeper than like modeling. I feel like oh yeah definitely because you know you're playing you're actually like um using your voice and your your body more and you're like you're playing a role and yeah you can you can go deeper into what you're doing and everything like that is there a certain kind of genre that you're interested in in terms of like acting like um I would love to do film or film okay yeah drama um and film. Yeah, I think I would like to do film more than TV shows. Um, I don't think I don't think I'm like a horror movie type. Oh, that's, yeah. that's not me. Yeah, some um, people are really into that. Some people like, like, I mean, it's like a craze, right? A total cult following and everything. Yeah, I've actually done some on camera hosting and done um, like interviews, red carpet interviews for horror huh. film fest, like Etheria huh. Film Fest. That's at oh, the I've Egyptian Theater. Huh. Yeah, so um, it is definitely like, but it, it, it's fun. But, but yeah, I don't think I'm a horror film girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's so interesting. It's, I do have, I do have a good friend. Um, that she like does she's Asian American actress also and um she's really into that horror film genre but yeah I'm not like that's not not I've interviewed um I've interviewed some like I think I've interviewed like some actresses and a director yeah that did horror and stuff like that it's so interesting yeah people are like really into it <laughs> yeah no, it's definitely a thing in like all the fake blood. I mean, uh, yeah. my boyfriend loves horror films. Um, so he I'm always kind of wants to watch horror, of horror films. I'm kind of scared of horror films. I think I get scared. Me too. But he's like, it's not real. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but like when you're watching it, you're like in it and it does yeah. feel real. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, like, um, what kind of training have you done for acting or um, like, how do you prepare for your auditions? Um, so I trained at Margie Haber studio and Ivana Chubbuck. Um, oh, I just took her. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. She's really great. Um, and I just took a workshop with Leslie Kahn. Um, and that was really good too. I guess for auditioning, I really want to like, I really am focusing more on like just the auditioning aspect of it, like breaking down the script and kind of like you know, understanding what the audition is asking for, like having my setup with the room and the lights and everything. Um, I actually use this website called We Audition. So you um, can send your, your, your script to someone else and they read the other um, nice. roles or the other parts and they read it back to you. Um, so then you don't actually have, really have to like have a real, you don't actually have to like call a friend. I mean, like, hey, can you read lines with me yeah I don't have to like have a friend come over schedule a time it's very like instant I can book someone like on the spot um and it's really cool because a lot of them are actors too so they can really help you um 
with like the process or maybe give you some suggestions, like if you're open to it. Um, so I've done that. I've also worked like one-on-one -on -one with um, my teacher who was at Margie Haber studio. He was the one that helped me with the Hallmark um, audition and that one went really well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like my process. But again, I think it's something that I, I really need to like devote more time into like doing the audition. Um, when I did that Hallmark audition, I worked with that, um, my teacher for like, I think like three hours. And then I had a friend like read the lines to me as I did the audition tape. So like total, it probably took like five hours to do wow. the audition. Oh, yeah. Whereas like, I think with like modeling castings, it's a little bit easier because you you know, it probably takes me about an hour to submit for a model job. Um, so I think that's kind of like, I really need to put my mind and like my time into like, okay, this is going to take more time to like do the audition, but this is like what you want to do and the direction that you want to go into. Yeah. Are for your modeling castings, like, um, are they also kind of like, um, you're doing them online also? Like, yeah, I mean, since COVID, um, a lot of like self taping is 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 like the new norm, I guess. So, it's like as a talent, you really need to know more than just like how to pose in front of the camera these days. It's like you really need to know how to like set up a room with like lighting and like have your camera the right way and know how to edit it, post, and put everything together and kind of like package it and zip it up for casting directors. Um, but yeah, self tapes have definitely become a thing, um, where like, you know, they want to see your personality on camera. You tell them, you know, your basic info, name, height, where you are, that kind of stuff. Um, and then sometimes they'll ask you to do a specific action. So like, I've been asked to like, pretend I'm rowing a boat or like, you know, pretend I'm like outside, like playing with my dog or having drinks with my friends. Um, so they just kind of want to like see you in like a natural setting, I guess. Um, and then they ask you questions, you know, like what are your hobbies? What are some fun things that you've done? Uh, what's, what's your favorite thing to do outside of modeling? Hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen yeah. Like, um, acting auditions like where they say like um like what's pretend like you know you're an animal and like what would, like how would you act if you were this animal <laughs> or like you know things like that you know I mean? yeah <laughs> like funny things they want to see like your personality or something <laughs> yeah that's so funny I just saw a video on Instagram where it was um Destiny's child like the members oh. of Destiny's Beyonce yeah. and um they were like what animal would you be and they were all like like Beyonce was like I would be a whale <laughs> and <laughs> and Kelly was like I would be a jaguar and like the way I would walk in the room and like my so back would curl up it was just it was funny because that is stuff that they, <laughs> they do ask you <laughs> did you um did you look at it at all about like the fashions of like um the celebs um that walked the carpet for the Met Gala. Did you see those? Yes. Yeah, yes, I, was, I saw I was just, them. Yeah, I, I looked, I think I looked at the Vogue article with all the photos and, um, oh, I looked at, I think I looked at some videos too. And um, I saw the one of Doja Cat. Was it Doja Cat? Yes. She's yeah, like, she dressed up. You her meowing? Cat. Like meow. Yeah. <laughs> they interviewed her and she just responded with a meow. <laughs> And then I think they were like, oh, there's two cats on at the red at the oh. Met Gala because then Jared Leto showed yeah, up. Jared Leto suit. That was crazy. I was like, oh my yeah. God. He was so he's so wild. He is he definitely is. Yeah. I like mean I make I up and like the full on. I loved it though. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to the Met Gala, you definitely have to like commit to like the theme. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's always interesting to see what everyone's going to do, like with what, you know, how they're going to dress up and everything. Yeah. It's fun. I think this year was a fun theme too. Yeah. I got Carl Lagerfeld. Right. Yeah. Like a tribute to him. Yeah. It was a really good thing. Yeah. I think it's a really good one. Yeah. Cause he's like fashion icon and everything. So it was perfect. Legend yeah. And icon. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, um, 
you know, we talked about you being like Asian American and, um, you know, and it's like, you know, we're celebrating like AAPI Heritage Month in the month of May. And um, um, tell me a little about your activism and how you're an ad advocate for like, um, you know, Asian Americans. Yeah, so um, I do content creation on social media. So I'm like pretty active on Instagram. And in 2021, when like the hate crimes were happening against Asian Americans, I spoke out about it on social media. And I was just kind of like informing my community about like what was going on and like why it wasn't okay. And here are ways that you can help and like be active. Wow. Um, so I really connected with other people who were, um, you know, vocal about like that whole movement um, in New York and um, specifically. So I co-hosted a rally um, to stop Asian hate and I connected with a lot of like activists at that time um, that were like, you know, doing rallies and, you know, pushing for change. Um, so that has been like, that was like a really big moment just because I felt like I was like truly like not just like being like an influencer on social media but like inspiring and like making an impact and it was like I kind of just like noticed the difference like there's a difference when there's like that big of um like moving the needle moment versus like like hey like you should buy this makeup or like you know buy this outfit kind of thing um so it was, it was a really, I guess it, it felt really impactful for me. Um, but yeah, since then I've just been like an advocate for um, change, especially in like the media. And I think that that's kind of like also why I want to focus more on acting because um, I feel like there does need to be better representation of AAPI and um, Asians in the media. And I feel like there has been change uh, but I feel like there's a lot more work that can be done. Yeah, most definitely. And um, yeah, so like um, like for the when you put the rally together, um, like was it like actually like in person or? Yeah, so it was in uh the park in Chinatown in oh, New York. Wow. Yeah. How was and so a lot? That? Like, had you done that before? Some of the community activism had you had experience with that or um to be honest not really like I had done on-camera hosting um up until that time so they had asked me to like MC and host um and no I hadn't really done like a lot of activism so it was interesting to tap into like you know people who had been doing activism uh you know protest and holding like meetings and events for like years prior to this happening um it was really interesting to see and also it was really um interesting to meet other people in the community and connect with those people um so yeah i uh it's oh, really that's very important that's really wonderful um how, how what was that experience like for you like connecting with everyone you know, in person and um, rather than online and like the kind of like bringing people together and like the, with the community. Yeah, it was really great because at that time COVID had like, you know, kind of lifted. We weren't like sheltering in place anymore. So there weren't as many restrictions. People were able to like gather and, and crowds like that. And um, it was good, I guess, just because like where I grew up, I grew up 30 minutes west of Philadelphia and it was in the suburbs, mostly white. There were only like two Asian families in my neighborhood where I grew up. And, you know, most of my friends in high school were white. So I think I got to a point like where I had a little bit of an identity crisis after like moving out of my hometown, kind of like, okay, who am I? Because like outside of my house, it, my culture was very much like, um American whereas inside it was very Asian with my parents and all the roles that they had and you know everything that our traditions and things that we we're doing like internally I guess um so it was really nice to connect with other Asian Americans um and like find like a common thread and common um like be able to relate to them because I feel like I hadn't really had that um you know 
while I was living in New York prior to that, I was modeling. And so meeting a lot of people in like the modeling world were like people from that were a little bit more international um, or spending time in Europe. I had met a lot of Europeans, but this was really a moment where I was able to connect with like, you know, other Asian Americans, people who look like me. Yeah, that's so great. That's really wonderful. You know, and it it really is. It's so nice to um have a really um true like you know community connection. You know, connect with like people. You know, in person. I mean, because it's like it's one thing to connect with people online, which is it's, it's very great. It's all great and it's rewarding as well. But actually, to have like a a real like in person like we're so like I mean of course we still have those but it's like it it's if it's really good feeling you know because we have lots of that it's like it's kind of strange to talk about and to think about it but like you know now it's like I you know I appreciate it more now that it's like oh yeah yeah it's like it's been so weird like um like now that like you know when when we had like with the pandemic and the lockdown it was almost like I, at least for me, and I think a lot of people, I went through this time where like, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually craving like real human, like connection, like a real, like a real, like sit down, like, you know, I miss those like coffees, like real coffees, like in a coffee shop with friends or whatever, you know, like I was like, oh my God, I need this, you know, I miss oh, totally. Like, there was so much less of that, like, you know, than like when I moved back to LA, like it was like my homecoming. And like, if it was like years ago, there would have been like tons of like, I would have had like tons of like, I don't know, family gatherings or like lunch, way more like lunches or like welcome back things like happening. And I was like, oh, well, there's so much less going on, you know, because of like COVID because everybody was like, more cautious so I was like oh this isn't like this is like kind of like weird so but I mean things are like way you know getting way better now so it's like things are like changing right but everything's changed like evolved um but I mean totally yeah but um now it's like I like I think we have a whole new perspective and I think everyone has um more of a appreciation for like um I think more like you know, just in general, like, um, like meeting with like people, like in person, real in person connections, like how valuable those really are compared to just like these online connections. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a, I, at least for me, like I have, like, I value it like way more, like before it was like, just like, not like I totally took it for granted, but it was just like the norm. But now I'm like, oh, you know, I've, I, treasure it so much more you know than before yeah think about it I mean I I remember during COVID like right like six seven months before COVID happened my dad had gotten really sick so I was living in LA at the time and then moved back to Pennsylvania to help take care of him um and so unfortunately he passed and then COVID happened so I was kind of in Pennsylvania at the time and even when like all this stuff was the South Asian hate movement was happening. I was like in between Pennsylvania and going up to New York for like jobs, model bookings and stuff. So I definitely do understand you on like that disconnect. And even with like, you know, BLM, like I remember my friends or seeing on Instagram stories, like my friends, you know, going out to the streets and protesting. And I just like message them, like, I really wish I could be there to support you and like, you know, stand there with you. But like, I can't because I'm in Pennsylvania right now. Um, so I totally get that, like not being able to like have that in-person connection. Like I remember going on like FaceTime dates during COVID and that was like a thing. Like we'd have like, let's sit here and like drink wine and like get to know each other. Oh my God. um, What did we do? We had like these, I don't know, like parties, like on like Zoom or we had like breakfast with like on zoom with like groups of people and we'd be like eating breakfast breakfast like no yeah. breakfast or like champagne breakfast we like all eat <laughs> together <laughs> it was like when like events were like canceled we're like we're still gonna like celebrate together <laughs> and like yeah I remember doing that too or just like even putting on a movie with my friend like at the same yeah. time and just like yeah. 
like I don't know being coexisting together online (laughs) like I did it was really fun kind of it was kind of fun like I did um a watch party I had um a couple of my friends, um, they're actually Asian American actors and producer. Um, they had, I think they had a show um, on, um, I think it was like premiered on Amazon Prime and video. It was like, it was right during COVID in the beginning. And then they invited me um, to a like Facebook watch party. Oh, cool. Yeah, on Facebook. And then I was like, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I wouldn't have the patience now because I'm like, I have Zoom. I got Zoom fatigue because through COVID, like I, it was too much Zoom. I'm okay oh, now yeah. because I, t- I took a long break from Zoom. I- I'm back. So I'm with you and I'm back. But like, yeah, <laughs> yeah like I, I took a long break. But like, um, like we did, we, we like um, together, we watched like, um, we like, binge watch the, the whole series together and then like all the actors and like the filmmakers they like I would they were on the Facebook I was with them and then like I was I guess I was on Facebook too and then they would be like making comments and then like we were all watching it together oh, we fun. Were making comments like we would write and it was really fun and then yeah it was really neat and I, um yeah so it was really enjoyable but you know, those those were the things that were like opened up during COVID, like Facebook watch parties and stuff like that. So, and then yeah, I, it was like a, a different way to connect. Like, yeah, and I think um, a lot of those types of um, online kind of things became more of a staple. So, like, so all this online stuff kind of opened up now, right? Yeah. So, like, so like there's a lot more opportunities online, maybe um, that we do now in terms oh, of oh, for like, sure that we didn't have before <laughs> like zoom yeah. interviews like are bigger now like everybody does zoom interviews which it was less before but now it's like the norm which is yeah nice. yeah cool yeah um yeah well um I think we're we're coming to an end very soon but um yeah but um yeah, I'm, it was like such a pleasure to meet you and talk with you. I I would love to like Thank you. Just chat offline more sometime. Maybe I could get, maybe get your email or something. You yeah, definitely. Or something. And maybe you are, um, you have, um, oh, I think I have your Instagram. I think they gave it to me. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would love that. And, um, yeah, like, um, Yeah, I was wondering, this is like offline, but like I, I've been actually doing modeling. I've always done modeling too. Like I actually, um, when I was like younger, I also, I always got scouted in malls too. Yeah. The same thing every time. You did too. Oh my gosh. So what happened when you would get scouted? It was like, yeah, it was, it was always like that. I, when I was younger, it was very like, well, because, you know, it was like half I'm half Asian and you know it was like a lot of like photographers like that so it was like every time I would walk into a mall it was always like weird it was like all like oh my gosh scouts or like photographers I always used to get that and um did your mom or like your parents they they didn't like like it okay yeah yeah, they didn't like it well my parents didn't really like it like they would shelter me and stuff like that but then at but then the, finally, like they were at the uh, at one point, they're just like, just forget it. Like they just had to just like, because it was happening since I was like a baby. So then yeah, like, just forget it. But I'm, I'm going to give you my, um, should I give you my phone number too? Yeah, give me your I phone think number. Zoom is ending. So I just don't oh, want to okay. like get caught okay, give me your phone number. I... Oh, thank you. Yeah. Cause I, I've been in, I just got published in like three magazines recently. Oh yeah. wow! Congratulations! Yeah. Oh, thanks. And um, I um, I I'm, I have an agent, an acting agent, and for and stuff like that. But for the, I have like I'm kind of with this like n- new modeling agency, and that I, yeah. But I I would love to get some more tips and stuff like that. 